In this unit, we are going to look at the hypothalamic regulation of appetite. So the hypothalamus, which sits just anterior and inferior to the thalamus, this is our main drive center. This is our main site of homeostasis in the body. And uh, like a lot of central control regions in the brain, it's receiving input from a lot of um, in internal sources. Okay, and you could argue external ones as well. So we are going to explore many of these factors, but um, and we're going to explore actually what the circuitry in the hypothalamus looks like. But this just gives us a kind of a general um, overview that we can build into. Okay, because we're going to learn that adipose tissue speaks, sends signals to the hypothalamus primarily through leptin, as we learned about earlier. Okay, our digestive tract sends a number of signals that also have uh, receptors in the hypothalamus. Uh, for instance, like ghrelin or cholecystokinin, uh, we're also going to see how those factor into appetite regulation. Uh, later on, we're going to learn about the microbiome and how some um, metabolites from the microbiome and probably other factors as well, vagal afferents from the microbiome as well, also communicate with the hypothalamus. Okay, but also there's communications between our limbic system and our hypothalamus and our thoughts <laughs> can affect our emotions and our thoughts, you know, our prefrontal cortex and the, um, the circuitry there, like it's all in communication. Okay, so all of these things are competing for whether that appetite signal is more on the accelerator side of things like eat or more on the like break side of things, don't eat, okay? And of course, our food environment also affects our appetite through the way we perceive and associate uh, what we see out there with, you know, how rewarding it might be, which is something more for the next, for the second appetite uh, module, okay? So like I said, um, adipose tissue secretes messages, uh, sends messages to the hypothalamus primarily through leptin, and this is more of long-term regulation of appetite. It's not like within the same day more. It just gives uh, the appetite center basically a message about um, you know, how full our fat stores are, and if they're very full, more leptin is released, um, and appetite uh, tends to decrease or satiety is promoted. Okay. Like I mentioned, the, um, the digestive tract also sends messages to the hypothalamus as well. Our stomach releases uh, leptin, ghrelin, our pancreas releases insulin, which also has receptors on the hypothalamus, large intestine, um, well, mostly through its microbiome uh, association, sends messages to the um, hypothalamus as well, and so does a, a small intestine through things like uh, CCK and um, GLP-1, which we'll also learn about, okay? So there's long-term regulation and short-term regulation, but again, we're just kind of moving into trying to understand how all these uh, signals that are coming into the hypothalamus, the arcu arcuate nucleus of the hypothalamus, can affect our drive to eat or not to eat, okay? And like I said, uh, the hypothalamus is dually controlled, meaning that there is a satiety pathway and there's also a um, what we call a hunger or a, an appetite pathway, depending on, on what you call it, okay? So we are gonna break down this slide over the next few modules, okay? But like I said, this is all representative, mm, all of this primarily is representative of the hypothalamus and the, the arcuate nucleus of the of the hypothalamus. And in particular, here we have, like I said, these orexigenic um, neurons, and we also have anorexigenic or like don't eat neurons that feed into something called the paraventricular nucleus, okay, of the hypothalamus as well that affect overall food consumption, okay. So. We're gonna break down, we're specifically gonna look mostly at POMC, and we're also gonna look mostly at AGRP. So when you see POMC, think don't eat, think satiety, okay? When you see AGRP, uh, think uh, eat, think hunger, think appetite, okay? And know that there, there's cross signals there. 
Yeah, but here's a good question. But how do we know? <laughs> how do we really figure out what specific neurons do and how they actually work to affect anything like food intake? Well, there's different methods, but one of the methods that we're going to see come up over and over again in this whole appetite unit, unit is this concept of um, optogenetic um, uh, stimulation. So to show you just a little bit more about what I mean by optogenetic uh, activation, uh, like we said, we can use, well, we can use a vector uh, with a specific promoter that is able to target a spe specific type of neuronal cell. And when that vector implants basically this channel into those particular neurons, this channel is, this one in particular, the CHR2 or the uh, channel rhodopsin 2 channel, is a blue light gated cation channel. And what happens is if I have neurons that are expressing this particular channel, when, like I said, I shine a light, <laughs> it's usually up here, you put those little like mouse hats on them and shine a light on them. Um, when that light is shone, that's a light activated channel. So that channel depol depolarizes and that neuron fires basically. Okay. There's also ones, it's types of channels that we can use that actually hyperpolarize uh, neurons as well. So they cause an inhibition of, of channels. But most of the optogenetic studies that we're going to look at are more this channel rhodopsin light activated channel. So before we get into some specific studies that have used channel rhodopsin and uh, optogenetic uh, activation, I just want to kind of give you the overview of the neuronal types that are found in the arcuate nucleus and how they are affecting eating behavior. As far as the don't eat pathway, okay, that was on the right side of that previous slide, there are neurons that co-express something called POMC and CART, which we'll get to in a second. Okay, so POMC is pro-opiomelanocortin, and this is a precursor peptide. So what these neurons can do is they can release that, um, that precursor peptide that is then cleaved into its various products. So these POMC expressing neurons, they can uh, produce something called alpha MSH, okay, melanocyte stimulating hormone, that is then going to activate neurons in the paraventricular nucleus, also of the hypothalamus. And they, those neurons, the main way they sense that alpha MSH is through the MC4R receptor, okay, that melanocortin 4 receptor that we talked about in the genetics unit when we talked about one of the big monogenic causes of obesity, which is deficiency in this receptor. Okay, so when this, uh, these dually expressing neurons are, are um, stimulated, okay, so for instance, leptin, when leptin binds to its, I'll call LR, leptin receptor on these POMC neurons, they release this alpha MSH, which binds to its receptor on another neuron in the paraventricular nucleus, and then this is primarily the pathway that causes that don't eat signal, okay? That satiety effect, okay? Like I said, these POMC neurons in the arcuate nucleus of the hypothalamus uh, co-express uh, another uh, product called CART, or cocaine and amphetamine regulated transcript, okay? We know that this transcript also has a role in this satiety pathway, but it's less understood and we're actually really not going to cover it much. I really want to focus our discuss discussion on these pro opio um, uh, side of these neurons. Okay, so that's ba this basically is just kind of a <laughs> maybe more complex looking version of what I just went over. Right? So when leptin is released from adipose tissue, it binds to its receptors, that LEPR receptor, on those dually expressing POMC CART neurons. 
okay um, especially from from the palm C uh, pathway alpha MSH is released see palm C where one of its products is alpha MSH which binds primarily to that MC for our pathway okay and that MC for sorry sorry for the drawing the MC for our pathway okay and again in the paraventricular nucleus of the um, of the hypothalamus and this is ultimately responsible for that don't eat or satiety signal okay so this shows the same concept again, but I like to kind of show it in different ways because I find I'm a very much a visual learner and sometimes when we see it different ways, it kind of starts clicking a bit more. Okay, so again, we know leptin binds to its receptor on the dually expressing POMC cart neurons. Um, uh, the POMC neuron in particular releases alpha MSH, which binds to the MC4R receptor on those uh, PVN neurons. And this is one of the main uh, factors that promotes a uh, decrease in, um, in energy intake and also has an effect on energy expenditure as well, but this part is less uh, understood. Okay, so this again is more of the satiety pathway okay how do we know this how do we know <laughs> what palm C neurons do and what they work through etc here we come back to that concept of optogenetic stimulation okay so when we have these palm C neurons express that light light activated channel rhodopsin and we shine the light Okay. When we shine the light, that means that that palm C pathway is going to fire. Okay. And when we shine that light, we notice that food intake goes down. Okay. They eat a lot less. Why satiety is promoted. Okay. Um, and satiety is promoted and over time, body weight goes down. That kind of seems pretty related. Okay. So the question is, is it just the light that's causing them to eat less? How do we know, how, do, how are we sure that it's not just the light that's making them eat more? Well, when they uh, did the same stimulation, but without the expression of that channel rhodopsin, there was actually no change. And they shined a light, there was actually no change, okay? So it's showing that it's really the, the, the activation of, of that particular neuron, that firing, I should say, of that particular neuron is what's promoting a, a cessation or a decrease in food intake. Okay, and this last um, column right here, this shows us that what POM C is working through is actually through the melanocortin receptor. Okay, that it's it, that part of what's making this pathway promote satiety is its linkage with the melanocortin receptor, which we saw in the last slide. Okay, so in these in this situation, what they what's different is when they stimulate that same channel, so they have the palm C neurons with the light activated channel, okay? But they use mice that have an, a, a goody protein that blocks this receptor. When this receptor is blocked, the melanocortin receptor is blocked, even if this is firing, food intake doesn't change. When I stimulate, when I turn that light on, food intake doesn't change, okay? Which suggests that if it wasn't blocked, which we see over these two, okay? If it wasn't blocked, we would see a decrease in food intake, which suggests that again, it's the, that, that POM C is working through that melanocortin uh, receptor. What I just covered, the POM C cart pathway that's found in the hypothalamus, that is the satiety pathway. That is the anorexogenic pathway, the one that makes us eat less, okay? Conversely, we remember in the arcuate nucleus, there is that dual control. There's the don't eat pathway, and then there's the eat pathway. These two are the eat pathway, part of the eat pathway, or the orexogenic pathway, okay? So again, we have these dually expressing neurons, the AGRP and NPY expressing neurons, okay? We've actually talked a little bit about the AG part of this AGRP, 
Okay, remember we talked about the agouti mice when we talked about the gen epigenetics of obesity? Okay, there is something, there's a similar gene in humans, okay, that was fairly recently discovered, which is believed to be an antagonist of those satiety inducing receptors, okay? So if it's an antagonist on a satiety pathway, so we have less satiety, which means probably more eating, okay? Neuropeptide Y is another um, peptide that is well known to promote well, voracious eating, okay? It's expressed throughout the central nervous system, but uh, specifically its uh, presence and release in the arcuate nucleus of the hypothalamus is well established to promote that overeating that we see, okay? So there's a lot going on here, but it's actually not that difficult to understand. We're going to break this slide down uh, box by box. And basically what I'm trying to show is that these AGRP neurons, these ones here, okay, these are the ones that are part of the eat pathway, the hunger pathway, the give me more food pathway um, that uh, promotes, like I said, voracious eating. So this first uh, box here is just showing that we have an optical fiber that's been implanted into the arcuate nucleus uh, in order to stimulate those uh, channel rhodopsin uh, expressing AGRP neurons. Okay, so the, we've, we've had the AGRP neurons in the arcuate nucleus of the hypothalamus express this light activated channel. So again, we're trying to figure out what, this, what these neurons actually do. Okay. Well, B tells us a lot. Okay, so when I stimulate, this hole is the stimulation um, uh, sequence, and basically it's one second of stimulation and three seconds of rest is the protocol they used. They found that when they stimulate it, whenever the light was turned on, that mouse ate a lot. The light was turned off, and the channel was and the channel wasn't activated, and the AGRP neurons didn't fire. Food intake was more like baseline. Okay, and again, C kind of shows the same thing as well. If I look at the total number of pellets consumed during the stimulation period, when that light was stimulating those AGRP neurons, food intake went up significantly, okay, especially during that period. Whereas the mice that didn't express that channel and weren't having overactivation of uh, AGRP neurons, they had more of a kind of normalized eating pattern, okay? And the amount of neuronal firing was, um, there was a correlation with the amount of neuronal firing and food intake, which is unsurprising. And the more of these AGRP neurons that were found, the more food intake was um, uh, evidenced during uh, periods of stimulation, okay? And, and again, the, the next slide kind of says the same thing as well. So basically the summary is that when I shine a light on mice that express this light activated channel specifically in AGRP neurons, they eat a bunch, which tells me that AGRP neurons promote food intake and they're part of this eating pathway that we're gonna find out in some people is overactivated, okay? So like I said, I really wanted to kind of go over the basics of the circuitry in the hypothalamus. We learned, we mainly focused on the POMC uh, um, neurons as part of the satiety pathway, and we looked at the AGRP neurons and their ability to promote uh, voracious eating. What I didn't mention is that part of what helps them promote voracious eating is that they actually have an inhibitory effect on that melanocortin-4 receptor in those neurons of the paraventricular nucleus. And because they're inhibiting satiety, that person, that mouse in this case, wants to eat a lot more. So now that we understand this circuitry, we are going to start feeding in some of the signals that talk to this circuitry in order to promote more food consumption or less food consumption. And it's worth noting here again that remember that in obesity, individuals with obesity are more likely to have uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms, genetic changes in the genes 
that are associated with appetite regulation. So it's hard to understand the whole thing. Uh, we do know that one of the main monogenic uh, causes of obesity is MC4R deficiency. But quite honestly, there's probably a lot of small genetic effects that are also coming together to impair this circuitry. And in individuals with obesity, that is probably one of the reasons why food intake is so hard to suppress because of these, like, it's a drive center. And it's like driving people to eat a lot, okay? So one of the things, one of the kind of ways we can approach this is appreciate that eating less is going to be difficult for some people but also we can't really change the circuitry so let's start changing the signals can is there are there some signals that we can change okay because if the circuitry is less sensitive maybe by changing those inputs we actually decrease or increase the sensitivity of what's going to help someone with obesity perhaps eat less if that is their goal 